Matthews in here, and we are up to week six already of our six-week series, Spring Cleaning for the Body, Mind, and Soul. So just to recap, week one was all about diet, not going on a diet, but diet as in what you eat and how to use what you eat to spring clean your bod from the inside out. And then week two was all about exercise and how to harness the power of exercise to spring clean your body. And then week three, we moved more away from body and into mind as we learned how to declutter and de-stress in a healthy way that feels good. Um, week four was all about environments, which is all about cleaning your home, cleaning your personal space, and how that relates to your health. And then week five was all about sleep, so important and so underrated. And week six dun, 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 is all about spring cleaning your soul. So, as we dive into this, I just want to say I am fully aware that there are tons of ways to clean out your soul, <laughs> and I am not claiming to know the number one awesome way to clean the cobwebs out of your, out of your being, but I do have not only a really awesome way to look at this and get this done, but it's also super simple. You'll be able to get your mind around it. Um, but we're going to start off with a concept that might or might not seem a little airy fairy to you. So bear with me. I'm not really an airy fairy person, but I do strongly believe this um, because it's based on science. So what am I talking about? Okay, let's get down to it. We are made of energy. So that's what I'm talking about. We are energetic beings and we're all vibrating. That's, that's what your cells are doing. If you took like a high powered microscope and you looked at your hand, you would see that it's not just a hand. It's, it's molecules moving around. You're never, you're never stagnant. You're, you know, you're always in some sort of movement shifting because that's what energy is and that's what you are so as we are beings of energy we're all vibrating and we vibrate at different frequencies so some of us may be vibrating down here and some people are vibrating up here and you know when you walk into a room with you know, and somebody's in there and before they even say anything to you you feel like somebody popped your balloon, right? And they're vibrating down here and their energy is affecting you. However, when you walk into a room and the person is like just exuding their happiness, you feel immediately lifted up by being in their space. And you may not even know why, but you want to be around that person, right? So you want to be around this person, you don't want to be around that person. So we're going to spring clean our souls and bring us more towards this person being, you know, this person and, and uh, who we want to be, attracting people that we want to attract to us, to us. <laughs> Make sense? Okay, I hope so. Moving on. So I've come up with four simple ways to raise your vibration, to go from here to here. But first I want to talk about um, Dr. David Hawkins. So who is Dr. David Hawkins? Go ahead and Google him up right now. He created an emotional scale of consciousness. So what you're picturing down here, the lowest you can go is a 20. So it's easier to get it in your head when you have it numbered out. So thank you, Dr. Hawkins. Um, so 20 is way down here. And then you can go all the way up to a thousand. Pretty cool, right? So 20 is wallowing kind of in shame and 30 is guilt. So we move up from there. Shame, guilt, so on and so forth. And then all the way up to a thousand, between 700 and 1000 is enlightenment. 
So not a lot of us are hanging out between 700 and 1,000. Maybe the Dalai Lama, good for him, right? So, but 500 is love. So it makes sense to bring ourselves up, aim for at least 500, and then, you know, you can build on that as you like. So basically that's it. And if you want to see the full scale, I created a totally free PDF for you where I've put down everything that's included in this video plus that scale so you can check it out right now if you want to over at MirandaMatthewson.com forward slash SC6. So that's like as in spring cleaning six and the link is right here. So you can grab that totally free. And, um, but basically that's what we're working with, with that scale and how to, how to bring yourself up from that 20. Now, what would shame be? What would that lowest thing be? Say you did something that you're not proud of, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be like you killed your neighbor's dog. It could be, you could feel shame from, uh, not sticking to a diet that you said you were going to stick to. It could be, it could be anything that makes you feel guilty or shameful. That just sucks the energy right out of you and plops you down there. That's not really a fun place to hang out. So how do you bring yourself up? Well, the first thing, my first step out of the four steps that I mentioned is to realize, to understand that you are not your emotions. It sounds like a simple concept, right? But most of us are identifying with our emotions. We're, you know, we get caught up in it. It's like, oh, I'm so terrible, or oh, I did this amazing thing. And, you know, it doesn't matter what way the emotions are going. It's fine, actually, to feel either one. It's okay to be sad as long as you don't, as long as you understand that you are not sadness. It's great to be happy as long as you realize that, you know, it's not, it's not who you are. I know that sounds weird, right? Um, so for the sake of time, I'm just going to redirect you to Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, which really helped me understand this concept and sort of develop what he calls the watcher, where you can step back and, and, sort of watch yourself instead of getting all caught up in, in the mess, and often it is a mess, <laughs> you know, and you can step back and be like, okay, you know, I'm feeling pretty bad about that. Noted. Or, okay, this has been an awesome experience and I'm really enjoying this, you know, and I'm happy. Noted. You know, so, like I said, either way, whichever way it's going, um, you don't need to identify with it. It's not who you are. So that was a really hard concept for me to get. So just bear with me. And if you want to dive deeper into that, it has made all the difference in my life. Otherwise, well, I'd be way more of a mess than I already am. So <laughs> if you're feeling like a hot mess, grab that book, uh, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. <laughs> so the second step is to give yourself a wallowing time limit. So what do I mean by that? When you're all stuck in the muck and you're feeling like crap and everything is horrible and you're way down there hanging out in that 20 and 30 and anger is down there too, like it's just a kind of a mess. Um, give yourself a time limit on it. Go ahead and feel bad. It's okay to feel bad. Well, I don't know why there's so much pressure to be positive all the time. You know, just acknowledge, like I said before, that you are not your emotions and just feel it. Feel whatever you're feeling and let it go right on by on its way. So give yourself a time limit on it though. So um, sometimes I don't give myself 24 hours if it's like something real bad. All right, so I'm gonna give myself 24 hours to feel bad about, I don't know, not following through on something, getting my account into overdraft for a stupid reason, something like that, right? Um, 24 hours and then moving on. You know, it doesn't have to be 24 hours. Uh, you could have five days if you want to feel 
terrible for five days, you could have five hours, you could have five minutes, whatever. Personalize it to your specific needs, but don't let it just drag on and on and on. Give it a time limit. Commit to that time limit. And usually when you do that, when you put it out there ahead of time, like, okay, I can feel like crap for the next five hours and then set a timer. And then you've told that to your subconscious. Your subconscious is going to pay attention. And when that timer goes off, you'll be like, yep, I'm done. <laughs> so step number three. So you want to be consciously aware of where you are currently at on that scale of consciousness. So again, check out the PDF so you can get the whole scale. You can also just Google it up. Dr. David Hawkins emotional scale. Um, and recognize where you are at on your scale. Are you down there hanging out in shame and guilt? Are you somewhere over here in anger? Have you moved up to pride? What about courage, joy? love, where are you on the scale right now? So recognize that and then recognize and understand where you want to go from there. So know where you're at and know where you want to go. Now, I will give you a suggestion. If you are in shame, I don't recommend aiming for enlightenment. That's a big gap and you're likely to be disappointed. But if you're hanging out down here in shame, you can move up to guilt. And then once you move up to guilt, you can take a step up towards anger. Getting angry it always feels better than feeling guilty, right? I'm angry at those stupid potato chips that ruined my diet, whatever. <laughs> it's a move in the right direction. And then, you know, so wherever you are, basically what I'm trying to say is that you just take it one step up. So take it, take it in small increments. So just from one step to the next, but know what that is on the scale for you. And then step number four is know how you're going to get there. So it's easy to say, all right, I'm going to take it up to the next level and then be like, mm -hmm. What do I do now? So uh, when it comes down to it, when you're on the spot, it's kind of hard to have the presence of mind to know what will make you happy, what will bring you up to that next level. So what I suggest is making a list right now of at least 10 things that you know that make you happy. So like 10, and you can make more. Go ahead, but minimum 10. What 10 things make you happy? What about buying yourself fresh flowers? Does that make you happy? Certain music, a certain Pandora station or a, you know, a Spotify playlist. Does that make you happy? Hanging out with a certain friend. Call her up if it makes you happy. Make sure it's something healthy though. If drinking a bottle of wine makes you happy, you know that that's not really great for your body. So come up with something else, something healthy that makes you happy. So uh, maybe a specific class at the gym, if that makes you happy. What about, um, I don't know, essential oils, something like that. Taking a nap if it's not excessive. Something healthy though. Hopefully this, you know, my idea sparked off some um, ideas for you. I'll put a whole bunch more in that free PDF. So, oh, and that link is right here again if you want to go check it out right now. Put a whole bunch more ideas that you can use towards your own happy list. So, <clears throat> don't know what's happening to my voice. The weather is nuts. Anyway, so make that happy list and then use something on that list to pull you up to the next level. So do this all, do all of this super focused, super aware of what you're doing. Like, I feel like crap. Where am I hanging out on the scale? Let me figure out how to take it up to this point right here. And let me pick something on my happy list that I know will pull me up to that next level. Right? 
Cool. So just one more quick point before we end here. Um, just know that life is a balancing act and it's meant to be a journey. So if you get to enlightenment, don't expect to hang out there forever. You're, we're always going to be like on that scale. We're going to be all over the place all the time. And it's just a matter of balancing it out, using life's simple pleasures to lift us up to the next level. But things will always happen to bring you back down. Just know how to lift yourself up. Make it a practice. Um, because you're never going to get there. There's no there. There's no end spot. <laughs> you know, it's always going to be a back and forth. It's always going to be a journey. So just know um, how to more gracefully and smoothly move through that journey for yourself and do what works for you. So um, that concludes our six weeks spring cleaning series. So we have gone through body, we have gone through spring cleaning your mind, and now we finished with spring cleaning your soul. I hope you feel wonderful and that you've really enjoyed this. You can let me know over in the tribe how it's going for you. So that's at MirandaMatthewson.com forward slash tribe. That's where to find me. I'm always hanging out there. It's my free community of awesome, amazing women. Yes, you are awesome and amazing. All of you inspire me. So I appreciate you. Um, so tell me how it's going over there. And again, if you didn't want to set your hand on fire taking notes and you want to see the scale and see my uh, ideas about the happy list, then you can check out the free PDF and it's right here at MirandaMatthewson.com forward slash SC6. And I will see you next week for something totally new and awesome. All right. Bye.